Self-Replicating Eco Communities. One Community Weekly Progress Update number 307. One Community is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are creating open source and free shared blueprints and resources, tools and tutorials, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good living. Creating solution models that create additional solution creating models in the service of all life on this planet. My name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 nonprofit organization. This is a weekly progress update number 307, February 10th, 2019 edition. One Community's mission is to bring together people with the consciousness for the highest good of all life on this planet and to build self-replicating eco-communities as a pathway to global sustainability. And those self-replicating eco-communities are what you see happening in the background right now. Uh, first, of course, is the city center, the Duplicable City Center, which can be a center of a city with eco-homes built all around it, centralizing large-scale food production and dining, uh, laundry, as well as recreation space. Uh, and then also next, we'll be building the Earth Bag Village, which is the first of the sustainable villages that we will construct and the first one that we design. And we've also designed Straw Bale Village, Cobb Village, Shipping Container Village, Compressed Earth Block Village, Recycled Materials Village, and Treehouse Village. And all of these things are meant to be built in one location so that people can come and experience the self-replicating eco-community model, stay in a sustainable house, and take either the entire design or individual components and be able to replicate them because we are open sourcing and free sharing all the tools, the tutorials, the resources, the do-it-yourself instructions for everything that, we're, that it is that we're doing. And we're doing this as a pathway to global sustainability by making it easy enough, affordable enough, and demonstrates attractive enough so the idea will spread on its own and move the entire planet towards global sustainability within our lifetime. And if you run the numbers, the idea of 50 people coming together and one community is meant to grow to thousands of permanent residents and hosting hundreds of thousands of visitors annually. But if you just take communities of 50 people, and these communities could be urban communities, they could be rural communities, they could be somewhere in between as well. But the idea is that if you take groups of 50 people coming together with common vision and common goals, and they don't have to match our vision and goals, they can be completely different. We're designing everything with the consciousness for the highest good of all so that from that foundation, people can innovate and evolve what it is that we're doing. And we believe that if it's created with that consciousness as the foundation, then we've created a foundation such that it will support other ideas and still be a step in the right direction. And so the idea is that everything that we're doing is designed open source and free shared so it could be replicated as either individual components or as the complete teacher demonstration village, city, or hub designed to be built anywhere in the world and work in cooperation and collaboration with us to help others to build them as well. And if you run the numbers on that, if you take just groups of 50 people and if one community can inspire two additional communities to start the next year and us and those two communities can inspire four more communities the year after that, and eight more communities the year after that. As more and more people see what it is that we're doing, become knowledgeable about what it is that we're doing, start adopting and adapting our plans and designs to other environments, feeding more information into the system, inc increasing the global suite of open source, collaborative blueprints, tools, tutorials, and resources. If we can just create that self-replicating model and get it started so that one becomes two more after that, and then four, and then eight, and 16, and 32, and 64, creating this self-replicating idea, we can touch the lives of every single, we could include every single person on the planet within 30 years if we truly self-replicated that way. But if we can just self-replicate enough to reach that tipping point, and this is our real goal, to reach that tipping point of mainstream involvement, then the idea will spread like wildfire and can still touch the lives of every single person on this planet positively Impact, impacting our planet for everybody, even if a lot of people don't participate. We're just trying to reach that tipping point. And so one community is meant to be the first, the first self-replicating eco-community, the prototype model, where people can come, learn what it is that we're doing, experience what it is that we're doing, take all the blueprints and the tools and resources and go and use them in the way that they feel best, wherever they feel best. And in so doing, we want to stimulate a sustainability movement that will help everyone. We can create a world that works for everybody within our lifetime. And this is what we see as the most noble and fun 
and worthwhile venture we can imagine because we want to live this way. And we want anybody else who wants to live this way to be able to also. And the more of us that choose to live this way, the more good we're doing for the world because we can become the conscious and conscientious stewards that we're capable of being. We can take care of this planet. We can renew and rejuvenate this planet. And in the process, renew and rejuvenate ourselves. We can help ourselves and in so doing, help each other and help the planet at the same time. And so the one community model is designed to create the foundation, the platform, the replicable model for that, the self-replicating eco communities working together around the world to create a global cooperative, a global collaborative for the highest good of all people and all life that can benefit everybody. This is what we're up to. And we're an all-volunteer team. We're 100% unpaid, including myself, of course. Uh, we're a nonprofit organization. We're a non-governmental organization. And this is what we're doing. And everybody's invited to participate. So with all that said, here is, and on that note, we've had over, we've had over 300 volunteers at this point work with our organization to get us to where we are right now. And we're going into, we're in our ninth year now of developing. And so with all that said, here's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments working towards this goal of creating self-replicating eco-communities that can positively and permanently benefit all life on this planet. Check it out. The one community approach to highest good housing is eco-artistic home building that is affordable, sustainable, do-it-yourself duplicable, resource and space efficient, and consists of seven different sustainably constructed village models. This week, the core team continued design updates to the open source Murphy Bed furniture assembly details. This week, we proposed possible placement of outlets, specifically located the lights above the bed, and rechecked all parts dimensions. You can see some of this work here. And Vita Kumari Pandey, civil engineer, also completed her 31st week volunteering and now helping with the Earth Bag Village materials and costs. This week, she researched bulk earthbag tube purchasing options, worked on the three-dome patio cost analysis, and the tropical atrium cost analysis. You can see some of this work here. Shadi Kennedy, artist and graphic designer, also completed his 39th week leading the development of the Murphy Bed Instructions. This week's focus was creating diagrams implementing the new way we will attach the bed frame to the wall sections and integrating dimensions and measurement instructions for placement of the lights under the loft top section. You can see some of this work in progress here. Dan Alec, designer and illustrator, completed his 36th week helping with Earthbag Village render editions. This week he worked on improving the colors and perimeter plants in this view of the complete village looking north. Dean Schulz, architectural designer, continued working on the Earthbag Village. Here's weekly update 148 from Dean. This week's focus, as shown in these images, was finishing the urinal, shower, and sink elements. And Elizabeth Kahn, environmental consultant, completed her seventh week as a researcher with our team. This week, she researched alternatives to the chemical block used in waterless urinals for the most sustainable urinal options page we're developing. You can see some of this work in progress here. One community is also creating an open source duplicable city center. It is designed to be LEED Platinum certified, provide 12 guest rooms, dining for over 150 people, and laundry and recreation space for over 300 people, all while saving money, time, space, and resources. This week, the core team continued with week five of our research into lake and water retention landscape creation as an alternative source of water for the duplicable city center sprinkler and emergency systems designs, agriculture, gray water processing, and more. This week, we continued adding to and organizing our research into a step-by-step -step process and explanation and created the first supporting graphic. You can see some of this work here. Dipti Dondarker, electrical engineer, continued developing the lighting specifics for the city center. This is Dipti's 111th week volunteering on this task, and the focus this week was integrating the final rounds of requested changes to the AutoCAD layouts and lighting spreadsheets and then PDFing the final lighting reports for all the areas. You can see some of this work here. Tanya Griffin, Aubrey Ann Boyle, and Allie Marsh, interior designers from Lotus Designs, also completed their seventh week helping with the Duplical City Center interior design details. This week's focus was creating design overview graphics so we can update the designs in 3D, finalizing the floor design and colors, and adding more furniture and lighting details to the cost analysis spreadsheet. You can see some of this work here. 
David Olivero, mechanical engineer and data scientist, also continued helping finish the City Center HVAC designs. This week, he focused on adding additional labels to the AutoCAD, checking all layers, and adding additional cost analysis details. You can see some of this work here. And James Harrigal, student researcher, also completed his 10th week researching the best, safest, and most sustainable paints, primers, stains, and sealers. This week's focus was researching and writing up the details for the most sustainable stain options. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. One community's approach to highest good food is duplicable almost anywhere, scalable for different needs, more biodiverse and nutritious, part of forwarding a global open source botanical garden collaborative, and includes nine different free shared and duplicable growing environments. This week, the core team continued writing the behind the scenes narrative in the detailed food rollout plan for the various stages of development. This week, we continued research into what kind of fence is best for goats. We reviewed videos and extracted the relevant info to our behind the scenes food Google Doc, some of which you can see here. The core team also continued research and 3D design of the chicken coops needed for 100 chicks. This week, we redesigned the roof and nesting box. You can see some of this behind the scenes work here. And Guy Grossfeld, graphic designer, completed his sixth week working on creating an open source icon and symbol set for our permaculture designs. What you see here are the icons created so far. One community's approach to highest good education is designed for all age groups, adaptable to any schooling environment, inspiring and fun for all participants, includes national standards, all subjects, lesson plans, teaching strategies, learning strategies and tools, classroom design, and more. With eight years invested in designing it, this component of one community is pretty much complete until we move on to the property and continue to develop it with teachers and students. Completed sections include comprehensive subject outlines covering arts and trades, English, health, math, science, social sciences, technology and innovation, and values. Also, 52 weekly themed lesson plans covering all the subjects we just mentioned, all learning levels and ages, and usable in any learning environment. 12 detailed and progressive curriculum outlines are also complete, Summaries and integration of all the best-known alternative education programs, including Montessori, Waldorf, ORF, Regio, and more, and leadership skills, collaborative assessment formats and forums, a global online free education resource hub, classroom design, and more. This week, the core team continued working on the structural redesign of the Ultimate Classroom. We brainstormed options and came up with the new design proposal shown here. The one community approach to highest good society is globally focused, individually enriching, cooperative and collaborative, includes a highest good network and application, four different economic models, and combines fulfilled living and true earth stewardship for the benefit of all people and all life on this planet. This week, the core team finished the second half of the broken and incorrect links throughout our entire 1200 plus page website, and then ran a new report and started on the next 400 links to fix. You can see some of this work in process here, and we have about 200 more to go. Jin Hua, web and graphic designer, created two new video tutorials about keyword refactoring. Refactoring is removing broad or useless keywords. You can see some screenshots from these videos here. Emilio Nahara, digital marketer, also continued with his 18th week as part of the marketing team. This week's focus was using Jin's videos and refactoring the highest good food, AutoCAD, resource-based economy, and true community keyword strategies. You can see some of this work here. In addition to this, the Highest Good Network software team consisting of Jordan Miller, web developer, Tyler Calvert, full-stack software engineer, and Justin Coons, software engineer, continued developing the software. This week, the team created the new projects page, separated the table display component for reusability, created the basic admin style layout, finished the Redux transition and merged it with the master branch, and worked on developing the time entries functionality. You can see some of this work here. There you have it. There's one week of our team's progress and accomplishments towards this goal of self-replicating eco-communities. Uh, if you'd like to see more details, more specifics, links to all the open source content, you can visit our written blog. Visit our website, check it out. We have, we have thousands of pages 
of content that we've created is we continue to outline in complete detail every step of the process necessary to replicate everything that we're doing. Uh, if you'd like to see an email every time one of these updates comes out, you can send an email to onecommunityupdates at gmail.com. We'll add you to our newsletter list. Uh, if you'd like to help out, visit our helping page. Easiest way to help out is to join us on social media, to share our information on social media, uh, to subscribe uh, to this channel, to like this video. Uh, if you'd like to join us on social media, we're on all the different social media networks to make it as easy as possible. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, LinkedIn, Reddit, Pinterest, Instagram, and about 15 others. Uh, so wherever you are on social media, we're probably there as well. Join us there. Uh, get involved in what it is that we're doing. And if you're just supporting us by watching to the end, thanks. If you're somebody who's donated to our project, as I said before, we're 100% volunteer, unpaid team. So donations make a big deal in helping cover our website expenses and things like that, uh, foundational operating expenses, but they don't go to any, anybody's uh, salaries. They go 100% to forwarding our open source mission. So if you're somebody who's donated to our project, thank you for that. If you're somebody who's emailed us, thank you for that. If you're somebody who's just watched the end, thank you for that. And uh, until next week, we will, of course, keep on keeping on. Thanks.